Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 256 of Category 5 Technology TV. It is Tuesday, August the 14th, 2012. How are you, my friend? I feel like I was just here a week or two ago. Yeah, a week or two. Well, actually, How I you wasn't, been? I wasn't here. I was up in, up in, in Halliburton. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing all right. How's Robbie? Excellent. Well, you can probably see the bags under my eyes. and you're, you're Actually, I was noticing before. your hair is getting my a little hair stuffy. Is, yeah, I haven't uh, taken a whole lot of time for me lately. Uh, that's the way it's, it's all been. about you, Robbie. What did you, you hear? Mean? No, did you hear? We got the keys on Monday. Yeah. So tonight is our very, very last episode of Category 5 TV here in Studio B, as we call it, because it's our second studio that we've been in. Ooh. So the next one Studio C? Yeah, we'll call it Studio C. Why not? We'll think of all right. something cool there. And You're then beautiful downtown Barry. Yeah, you can check out my blog at baldnerd.com. <laughs> it's all about me, folks, at baldnerd.com. Um, yeah, there's a, uh, I posted about, uh, about the transitional kind of, you know, what we're doing here at Category 5. Because we're stepping into a temporary studio for the next... Who knows how Any long. Any able-bodied viewers who want to help out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Loads and loads of work. Um, the, the studio, well, I mean, you, you at home and, and those of you on Backstage Pass probably can't see this. I, I could give Backstage Pass a little bit more than those of you who are not on Backstage Pass. Hey, Backstage Pass, how you doing? You can see that uh, we have been working very, very hard around here to pack everything. <laughs> so we are literally in boxes. You still have a lot of stuff, Robbie. Robbie. We got a lot of stuff. A lot I mean, of that's, stuff. That's how it goes when you, when you have a studio right here. But uh, yeah, tonight we're actually going to tear it down. Um, I'm teaching some You're guitar around, lessons right? right after the show. I'm Not uh, right after right the show. Right after the show. Right after the show? I didn't see I a box of uh, Molson or... I don't know about that. Oh, or... that's because it's up in the fridge keeping gold. Oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, my, he's, my he's texting on his BlackBerry, cancel the, <laughs> cancel the lesson, cancel the lesson. <laughs> uh, BlackBerry, it's a remote. Hey, it's Garby, TikTok, Jot, Chris Reich. Hey, yeah. I want to say Garby. Chris Reach. I'll go with Reich, but you do what you like. Well, we could go with Chris Reach, and then... Because he can't reach from here. Automatically. Well, it's just the spelling automatically, then. Bottoms up. Chris is reaching for his drink. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Chris Reach, having a drink. Oh, yes. There he is. I purposefully mispronounce things just for you. And you do it so well so and convincingly I that, that, say, you know, we have trouble even I'm, realizing that you're only doing it on purpose. I do it so elegantly. Eloquently? Yes. That too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't work under these conditions. Yep. Yeah. I need a drink. Tonight we're going to be Chris. talking, well, uh, we, we've been through quite a week with regards to lamp stacks and zamp stacks and debian versus turnkey versus everything else so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight talk about uh, some of your experience this week too i guess you've been working on some of that stuff well I'd like to yeah, chat with you so about that working with another fellow on that and yeah and uh yeah had some fun cool we'll talk about it a little later on tonight uh viewer questions we've got lots of those I could tell you what's coming up in the newsroom if you like. Sure, yeah. Nice to see everybody in the chat room. I'm going to come back to you uh, just after Eric is done telling us what's coming up. I'll be back. Show. Well, show, here we go. All right, drink. Coming up in the newsroom, Blizzard has been hacked. Hey. Toshiba has canceled its plans for Windows RT ARM-based devices. Oh, dear. And GM is recalling almost 48,000 police cars. Hmm. We're on a joyroid that day. Hmm. <coughs> New glass inspired by nature is visible to birds, but not humans. What? Oh, so we can avoid that sickly sound of the poor the little bird hitting the back window. Stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. 
Thanks, Eric. Nice to see a chat room. Uh, let's see who we've got. D Tapia, sixty three. VK7HSE. Hey, nice to see you. We've got a couple guests in there as well. Nice to see you. Invincible Mutant, so, Jim Victor Bob. Kilo 7 Hotel Sierra yeah, something like Echo? That, eh? what, something what's that like all that? about? Uh, that is, is, I'm guessing this is like ham radio. That would be my guess. guess. Such a ham. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like the more I creative ones like guest underscore 1488. That's more creative. Is that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy who just pushes, oh. okay, sign in. Okay, that's Agamotto just it, joining it, us. It, nice to see you. call sign, all right. Yeah. Uh, Joe DeMax. Lord of Sporks, good to see you. Maxwell 6307, M. Hall 119, new to Linux. That's the name of somebody in the chat room. Oh, okay. Not, I not no that, idea what you're Not doing. that M. Hall is, is new to Linux, but there's actually somebody named oh, okay. new to Linux. Nice to have you here. Raffer, Artie Blair. I like this one. Steve-O, Robert F. How about Lord Robert of F, Sparks? Not Robbie F. <laughs> Lord of Sporks, yeah. Lord of Sporks, I like that. You know, spork. That's kind of like uh, More something between a, 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 a fork and a spoon, right? That's right. You used to get those when you get the french fries down at the little stand. That's right, made out of wood. The, yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, they have plastic Something like that. Now. They have plastic spork? Yes. How interesting. <laughs> I feel like like I don't want to leave it. You know, I start naming people off. So yeah. Steve-O, Steve-O, TikTok, Todd, U L, Yazid, nineteen sixty-five. It's so Yazid good to have you here. Or Yazid? Yes, yes, okay. it is. Nineteen sixty-five. Either way, w- you just said it two ways. So Chris, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jameson, joining us. Nice to see you, guest Harry. No, is that U L or is that you all? I would say Al. Wow. Well, it could be a southern. Wow. It might it's be all be y'all. One of those folks. It is going to be, be one, one of those. those. We got to keep Garby's interest tonight because he's had quite a day as well. Oh, so Garby. Power outages and or internet outages, I should say. But it's like having the power outage. What are you going to do without any internet? You're oh going to have a BlackBerry goodness. that you can share over Wi-Fi. There you go. What are you doing, Garby? Yeah. <laughs> Guest Harry says, isn't this an awesome world? I think I think we can say that. I think I you if you're referring that. to the the fact that the sky is blue and the birds are chirping, then yes. But if and it's Robbie's chirping. If it's that you know that here we are, you know, you're from where you are, watching from work. Shh, secret safe with no, us. No, no, so finally out of work, I think he said, didn't he? Oh, okay. All right. Well, good to see y'all. Oh, my gosh. Don't forget, if you've got a mobile device, m.cat5.tv. That's m.cat5.tv is our mobile site. And also, love to get your postcards. You can send yours over to us by snail mail. Takes a long time to get here, but it gets here. Category 5 Technology TV, P.O. Box 29009. Thank you. Because normally it's, uh-oh. <laughs> or oh oh, he says. We're gonna have to start. It's twenty nine u nine. No, it's two nine zero zero nine. Barry, Ontario, Canada. L four N seven W seven. Lima for November seven whiskey seven. For the yeah okay. He just has to see how many times he can say whiskey in the course of a show. I could yes. Yeah. Well, we do have your viewer questions. We have some questions. Hey, there's one here in the chat room from hey, guest right. 73763. Hey, yeah. Did I say that correct? Actually, I should probably say tree. Okay. Robbie, <laughs> I need help. Ubuntu right. 12.4 hosed my setup, and I had to install it fresh. My problem is I am having trouble getting FS tab to load my RAID and another drive on startup. It was working before 12.4 hosed it. Uh, can you help? I see the drive separately, but not as a RAID Nautilus. Has no trouble accessing the RAID correctly, but FS tab is being difficult. But your FS tab should see it as one... I mean, FS tab is, is your file system table, right? So it, you're you're configuring your RAID at the hardware level or at the in the BIOS or wherever, or because you're not dealing with a software RAID, right? This is a This is something that you've configured on the chipset rebooted the computer and um, this is from the chat room right guest 73763 hardware raid so you've yeah. you've configured this at the at boot 
So your system is only going to see it as one drive anyway. So do you have other drives in there that are being detected or what's going on? Because the, the ROM on your on your chip, like your, your RAID controller should be providing it as a simple logical volume, right? It's one drive as far as what FS tab is going to do. You do house calls? Maybe you could go in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Pay for the flight and we're there. Rob Gore, nice to see you. All right. Um, guest, can you send me a copy of your FS tab and the output of, now uh, you're on Ubuntu 12.04, so uh, do uh, sudo uh, blkid and hit enter. Give me the output of that as well. That'd be all right. Email me live at category5.tv, that stuff, unless you're on that computer right now, pop it into the chat room, but it's it's probably something that I'd like to see. Uh, even pop it in the forum. Love to see you in the forum. Uh, it's f- simply forum.category5.tv. All right. Oh, okay. We're drinking uh, coffee from Muskoka Roastery tonight, which is a word, by the way. They they caught... Mm. Yeah, we were talking about it, and yeah. uh, they said, hey, we were watching the show, and, and yes, roastery is a word. How cool is that? Mm-hmm. Very fragrant. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, you all is you Al, Uncle Al. Okay. Ah, okay, got it. There we go. Okay, let's move on to uh, <laughs> uh, how about some viewer emails? Yeah. All right. Here's a question from Marvelous. Hey, Marvelous. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll hit a question for sure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like no the fr- <laughs> well I'm sorry I'm just looking here at the no, the, morning the stream at the isn't here. frozen oh don't worry about that yeah <laughs> you text this user no mode. don't <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question from Marvelous here question I use Wirecast for Mac okay when using my Canon HV40 video camera and my Logitech USB web camera for a two-shot production, I'm experiencing an audio lag on my Logitech USB camera. I run the HV40 via FireWire into the Mac and the Logitech camera into the Mac via USB. I'm running my microphones through Zentix 802, uh, Zentix. Tix 802 mixer with output to my HV40 camera and thus bring all audio through the HV40 into Wirecast. What am I doing wrong? Thanks for your input. Zentix? Is it a Zenix maybe? X E N T Y X. Zentix 802. Oh, there is an actual mixer. But then, then there's always Xenix without the T. Yeah, okay. Is it a Behringer? Yeah. That no, that's a typo. Yeah, look at even the, it is a typo. Zen X. Yes. Because it's a Behringer mixer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just had to just had to clarify because I wanted to know what was going on there. Um, so is that USB output or is that analog output? Because how are you? So you're going into the camera. No, you're going into the camera analog. Going into the mm-hmm. Logitech USB web camera. Yeah. Uh, not using USB. Firewire. No, the, they're going through the, the firewire, yeah, the HD from, four, uh, yeah. 40 there. Um, so, there it is. Okay, so I think what's happening here is that you've simply got too many hops in the chain. You're going, here's here's the problem, and you've worked with audio, so you know analog to digital to analog to digital. So what's actually happening here is you've got your analog mixer, that's the Zenix 802. Okay, so this mixer here is an analog device. So you've got your microphone going in, you've got your analog main outs. See that right there? That's what you're going out from. So now you've got an analog signal from an analog microphone. You're going into what? A digital video camera that's converting the audio to digital. And then it's going along the fire wire, which is a you know a reasonably slow medium for data travel. And you're streaming video through that same medium. And then it's having to do what? Because it's audio, it's having to convert it back to probably analog. It may keep it digital, but there, th- you've got this kind of conversion thing happening that, that doesn't need to happen. What I would do instead is I would just take that board, okay, take the main outs, and go, you know, you've got a sound card in your, in your MacBook. I don't know if I have. No, I don't have anything to show you, but go uh, eighth inch. Sure you do. Do I? No, because that's quarter inch. 
Yep, puts your quarter inch. You're going to go oh, yeah, to yeah. RCA. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll You're work. Gonna well, yeah, get sure. Get an RCA cable and go to your. Sort of. Uh, you but you need to get down to a stereo. Yeah, if you had two of these. Point. Yeah. If you had two of these. Sorry, we can like just I rummage around the desk here. Yeah. and <laughs> Just find stuff. We're moving. So we just got random things. Uh, there you go. Just so you've got RCA output, quarter inch from the mo- board to RCA. The RCA cable with a quarter inch. No, eighth inch, pardon me, on eighth the other inch. end. Into, stereo eighth inch? Yeah, stereo eighth inch to the uh, to the input on your... Yeah. It's going to look like that. Yeah. <laughs> to the input on your, on well, your laptop, on too. your MacBook. Okay? <laughs> so then what's going to happen is your video is going to come from the cameras only. The au- audio is going to come from the, the board only. You're not going to have that hop that is actually pumping the audio through one of your cameras. So then it's losing sync with the second camera because it's not. It's uh, you're you're trying to push it through one of the camera devices on FireWire. So if you instead have it treated as three different devices, so video, video, audio, rather than one of your video cameras also doing audio then I'll bet you that's going to solve it for you. So take the board, go directly into the audio input. If you think your laptop only has a microphone input, I'll bet you it's going to automatically sense if you do a line input, and it's going to automatically switch it to line, uh, especially with the MacBook Pro. So So you're going to let us know about that, Marvelous. Please do. Right? Yeah. All right. We have another viewer question here. Uh, Before we get into that, we do have to take a quick break, Eric. What? We do. Good idea. We should take a break. Yeah, we'll be back right after this. Cheers. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV, and it's episode number 256. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Eric Kidd. Listen to that. I'm Eric Kidd. I don't it's think amazing, I, I don't man. think I sounded like that at all. I would try. I, I can't do that. That Hi, hurts. I'm Robbie Ferguson. Thanks. It's good to be here. <laughs> I heard Boys you. And girls. I heard this guy sing falsetto. I went to one of your gigs and you sang falsetto, and I was yeah, but uber it impressed. It wasn't done well. It was done excellently. All right. Mm. Ooh. Well, let's see. Um, and Chris has been staring at me the whole show. Oh, the business card. Your business card. Cool. That is a really cool business card she has. Isn't that awesome? I would assume that Krista designed that. That's she very did. cool. Nice card. All right. We have your question from Ron. Hey, Ron. Okay. Ron Smith asks. Sorry, I scrolled a little far there. Have you heard of ZAMP, Apache, MySQL, PHP, Perl? Yes, I have. Oh, it's uh, supposed to be a quick and easy way to install a web server. There's a version that installs on Linux, Windows, and Mac. I was wondering if it would be easier to use XAMPP or XAMPP. How do you pronounce that one? I'm going with XAMPP. I, I go with XAMPP. Okay, No, do that. or XAMPP. No, because we go LAMP, XAMPP. Would it be easier to use than Turnkey? Well, LAMP. And a LAMP is uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, for anybody wondering, right? Right? Tell me I'm right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Zamp is a, is a decent, I guess, you know, solution if you're stuck using Windows. But why would you use it on a Linux setup? Yeah. Um, actually, and I I tried Zamp when I was playing yeah. with the you know, Zamp the X kind of X-Zamp. meaning cross platform. Right. Right. So the whole point is that it's cross platform. And it was fine for you know if you're doing some web development and you want to just test your. Your stuff, it, it mm-hmm. seemed great. Um, the turnkey seemed considerably more robust, but I, I, I don't really. I guess it's. It. I don't we, have a We great should understand depth of a little bit about the difference. Knowledge. Uh, we've got Garby in the chat room who says, WAMP. Okay. If you want to use Windows. If you're stuck on Windows, use WAMP. Good suggestion. Uh, or uh, on Linux, use LAMP. Or alternatively, use a virtual machine. That's with a lamp stack, 
right? Linux, of course, being the 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 major operating system platform for web hosting. Uh, Apache being, you know, the the big dog as far as hosting goes. So, um, but then, yeah, what is Turnkey Linux versus uh, just a LAMP stack? So, Turnkey. Now we've worked with Turnkey, you and I. Yes, we have. Have you used Turnkey? And actually, Eric and I talked about it on the show a while back. Let's see if I can track that one. There's more to this question, too. Oh, okay. What's up? Are you still going to cover installing Apache MySQL and PHP? Well, let's let's take care of question number one first. So. Okay, so I've just done a quick search. Turnkey LAMP on episode number uh, 169. Was that so. a, did, did, did Rachel make a picture of you? <laughs> <laughs> Always. Here I like that picture. It says it's an old episode, but it, it still gives you a, a good idea what uh, turnkey is. Okay, turnkey is basically it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a turnkey solution for getting a server up and running very, very quick. So, Ron, really, it comes down to you know, do you want to be able to deploy a server quickly with as little administration as possible? That's where turnkey comes in. Um, <clears throat> would I just install Zamp on a ser- on a computer and and use that as a server? I wouldn't do that. Uh, would you install Lamp on a server and just let it run? You probably wouldn't do that either because you'd want to make sure that you've got some security in place as well. Um, after the news this evening, Ron, we're going to take a look at um, the option, which is to use Debian as an installer uh, or as a platform to install a LAMP stack. It makes things pretty easy as far as getting that set up. Uh, but I'd encourage you, again, to check out episode number 169 with regards to Turnkey. And then tonight, we're going to look at Debian. Uh, so we're going to actually install it ourselves. The difference, really, is that with Turnkey, it's an out-of-the-box solution. Everything is included. Everything's ready to go. And it's done. Mm-hmm. It's got security stuff in place. It's got um, your webmin in place so that you can administer it through your browser completely without having to know much about Linux at all. It's basically an out-of-the-box turnkey server that you can run in a virtual machine. There's also a, a Linux console you can... Uh, oh, absolutely, but you can do it through your yeah. browser. Yes. Yeah, so S- cool. like an SSH terminal. Yeah. So check out episode number 169. So... Um, then with Debian, it's it's a bit different because we're going to install the operating system tonight. We're going to get the LAMP stack going under that. And then the difference really boils down to now you're administering a server a little bit more with Debian or with anything like that versus Turnkey, <coughs> which is a little more out of the box, ready to go. So, All right. Sorry, All right. The, the next question. Okay. Well, the next part of that was are you going still going to cover installing Apache, MySQL, and PHP? on that fit pc3 miniature mm-hmm. server you have and yeah. then there's more um I okay well let's an- let's address that yeah uh we've well you've seen the fit pc the fit pc3 that's the little computer it's it's a dual oh, right, core right, right. computer it's it's outstanding for this little tiny box and we're going to virtualize on that so tonight we're actually creating the virtual machine that's going to hold the debian install that has lamp set up ready to go and then that fit PC is actually going to be running Linux on it with VirtualBox. And we're going to be running everything as a virtual machine. So uh, that way it's very, very easy to back up the entire system. Uh, we've got some other advantages there, but that's for a future show. But tonight we're going to be creating the virtual machine just on a desktop computer. In future now we can take that virtual machine once it's configured, transfer it over to the fit PC3, yeah. and we've got a server that is solid state and you don't have to... Uh, you know, cool it or anything. It just runs and runs and runs. So, absolutely. All right. And there's more. I have a Zotac Z-Box, or for our American friends, a a Z-Box. Oh, Zotac. 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 Maybe a Zotac. I don't know. Could there be a... I'm going to do a quick search. Z-Box. There it is. It is Zotac. And I'd go Z-Box, being Canadian and all, but maybe it's a Uh Z-Box, because it could be an American product. All right, which is a mini PC, not as good as the Fit PC3. Oh, okay. And yeah. then there's a URL, but you've already found it. Oh, okay. I'm hoping to use it as a web server to learn how to build a website. Just hmm. was not sure what is the best way to go. Linux Mint running XAMP or running Linux Mint with turnkey lamp in VirtualBox? 
I was just looking there that it says on this website that that is an Atom processor. So can you use... How are you running it? Or do they have a PC, like an Intel processor? Oh, they have an AMD platform one as well. Here's another one here. Cool. So that's that's cool. I mean, we're looking at all kinds of these little boxes. The Fit PC3 is is definitely uh, one of the, you know, it's a, I would consider it kind of a higher end, really, really good quality, solid state, you know, solid uh, metal body even. And uh, then you can get into some other units like the, the Zotac stuff here um, that uh, is probably a, a slightly smaller price tag, but probably excellent for, you know, consumer grade uh stuff like for what you're doing for setting up a, a, a media PC or setting up a little tiny server I don't know what the internal components are like uh, it looks like a plastic body um, and I'm not sure how how warm it runs or anything like that but you'd want to kind of monitor that kind of stuff you can see Man, warmly enough you could set your coffee up no that's not <laughs> well the one thing that I do see is there's a lot of grill work on it so I would think that it's a fan cooled system which means there, there's some points of failure there so all to say just that there's there's quite a difference between what we've looked at and, and that type of hardware. But can you do a similar kind of setup on that? Absolutely. Would you want to run it 24-7 as a, a server? Probably I wouldn't rely on it quite as much as I would with the Fit PC3, just because of the fact that it's it's more prone to, you know, it's it's from the things that I've mentioned there. So, but uh, yeah, isn't that cool? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll follow along with us. I mean, the right. FitPC3, what we're doing with that, you can do with your Zotac unit as well. Uh, as long as you can install Linux and VirtualBox, then you'll be good to go. There you go. Mm. Okay, we have a question from, and forgive me if I get this wrong, Hong Zheng. Hey, Hong Zheng. Hi, Robbie. I have a problem installing Linux Mint 13 to my desktop. I downloaded the ISO image through official website and burned it to a DVD disc. The installation actually went very well. After I took out the DV, the first boot seemed to be successful. Then I used apt-get to install some software like GIMP VirtualBox et al. After that, I modified slash etc slash fs tab configuration file to auto mount auto mount other partitions when the system mm -hmm. boots up next i rebooted the system but this time after i entered the new system through grub list the black screen displayed could not write bytes broken pipe instead of entering the gui um, after i upgraded the system using recovery mode the problem remained someone in the forum said the new linux mint 13 system uses tty8 instead of standard tty7 but i don't know what that means do you have any suggestions i've already done the installation twice but the problem remains best hmm. hong Zheng. so whenever you add it to fs tab it starts breaking and you're sh you're certain I'm, i would assume that uh y you've created a good fs tab file right the best thing to do is obviously create create a backup first and foremost when you've got a bootable system back up your fs tab before you start editing it just do a cp and make another copy um, but um you should not reboot your computer when you've edited your fs tab file before you've tested it you can do that with um uh, if you need to use sudo you would do sudo space mount space dash a and that does a mount all and it goes through your FS tab file and it will it will tell you if there's any problem with the file because it will spew out an error if one of the drives is misconfigured or something like that because you've edited the FS tab and created a problem and then rebooted your computer without first testing it there's no there's no way to know whether it was going to work or not and all of a sudden you've locked yourself out of the system but you should be able to use a rescue disk or a live CD get into the computer again <coughs> access your etc folder by mounting the hard drive and uh and then just re-edit the fs tab file but again would have been really really easy if you uh if you had a backup of your fs tab and i'm sure hong zhang saying oh now you tell me yeah, yeah. no i always <laughs> back up back up seriously yeah, I know. um no but the the whole you know mount uh, test it before you before you go rebooting um what was the second part of that question i'm sorry um, Hong Zhang had there. Mm, let's see, where were we? Oh, TTY7 versus TTY8. I have no idea about that. If Mint is using a different TTY terminal, uh, what that means though is uh, in Linux, really cool. Once you get once you figure out how to use your screens, uh, if you hit Control Alt F1, 
you're going to access TTY1. So then you can log into Linux, you can do your thing, you can do, you can run stuff, but you, then you can go TTY2, and all of a sudden TTY1 is still running all that stuff in terminal, uh, but then TTY2 is doing some other stuff. T uh, you, typically, Control Alt F7 or TTY7 is going to be your GUI, this uh, X environment. Okay. If they've put it on TTY8, for some odd reason, because it's been TTY7 for every distro for all time practically, uh, but if that's the case, then you would go Control Alt F8, and that's the actual F8 key at the top of your keyboard. And that will get you there. So, what does that's TTY what that stand for? I can't remember anymore. Uh, yeah, it's one of those old ones. Terminal, yeah, I, I don't there's your, there's your. What do you call it? Your trivia for the day. There you go. I'm not going to Google it, but I know somebody, somebody in the, chat in room the uh, chat room is going to tell yeah, me, and they'll win like huge amounts of cookies. Teletype, Chris Reich says. Teletype. All right. <laughs> Chris Reich is old. Nagamoto, is it guessing at teletext. Oh, teletext. Yeah. But that wouldn't explain the why. Yeah. Yeah, eh? I know Jot's probably over in Google land and figuring this out for us. There you those go. Those are for phones, <laughs> not... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that's one of those useless knowledge things that you'll you'll love to have. <laughs> We've got to... Uh, I, I'd like to hear uh, some of that news stuff that you were talking about. Uh, You'd like that, would you? Yeah, yeah. And we've got some more of your questions. And, of course, join us in the chat room. It's Category 5 on Freenode. Love to have you there. And, uh, Eric, yeah. Take her away. Well, all right. Here's the top news stories from Category5.tv Newsroom. I meant to say here are, not here. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. That's the kind of thing I'd jump all over you for. Yeah, you sure. certainly would. Blizzard Entertainment, maker of popular multiplayer online games such as World of Warcraft, Diablo, and StarCraft, warned on Thursday that its internal network was breached, revealing scrambled passwords and email addresses. Hackers obtained email addresses for users located outside of China for Battle.net, Blizzard's port of portal for its online games and the answers to those users' personal security questions. Affected regions include North America, Latin America, Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia. Users of the service are being asked to update their software, change their password, and security question. Hmm. Wow. Toshiba has cancelled previously announced plans to sell computer and tablet devices based on Microsoft's Windows RT, which is essentially a version of Windows 8 created specifically for ARM-based devices. Toshiba has pl had planned to use ARM processors from Texas Instruments, but due to delays in getting those processors, have decided they will concentrate instead on Intel's chip and use the Windows 8 version designed to work on those. The decision announced yesterday is a blow to Microsoft's plans to use the new software and chips normally found in mobile phones to combat the dominance of the iPad. General Motors is recalling more than 38,000 Chevrolet and Impala police cars in the U.S. and Canada because a part in the front suspension can crack and cause a crash. The recall affects police cars from the 2008 through 2012 model years. The lower control arm and the suspension can fracture, causing sudden changes in handling that could make the driver lose control. Um, a special glass coating inspired by spider webs has been used in the UK for the first time. A lookout tower at uh, Lindisfarne has uh, installed it to protect the hundreds of species that flock to the island off, northeast, off the northeast coast of England. The Ornolux glazing reflects ultraviolet light, which can be seen by birds but appears invisible to humans. Uh, tests suggest it can cut bird strikes by about two-thirds, and work is being done to improve it further. The technology was developed by the German company Arnold Glass. That's with one S. A friend of the owner of the company saw an article about the orb weaver spider, said the firm's export manager, Natalie Kopp. Its web reflects UV light, protecting it from being destroyed by birds as they see it and do not fly through. Hmm. The idea of developing a coating for glass inspired by nature was born on the same evening. Uh, 
Get the full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Eric Kidd. It's interesting how some people find their inspiration. I like to be reading an article about a particular type of spider web and then think, oh, that would make great glass. Well, the fellow who... So the birds don't fly into it. ...came up with Velcro was because he had burrs on his dog, I think. And he was... Oh, that makes sense, ...looked at them really close and saw those little... And realized that it was like this and patent. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes, indeed. How exceptional is that? Hey, tonight's show is brought to you in part by Cordery Electric, CorderyElectric.com. They're the official electrical company of Category 5 Technology TV. Also, we'd love to extend to you a free month trial of Netflix. Cat5.tv slash Netflix. And uh, I guarantee you, you're going to enjoy that. <laughs> oh, my apologies to the nice folks who got that little uh, uh, I asked. The the Zios. Why what's up? Well, I, I finally actually remembered I, I needed to change my oh, password, no. <laughs> so so you no longer have my free Netflix Be- account. Yeah, behind the scenes, <laughs> behind the scenes, uh, we had we had set up the Zios. Oh, and we better do demo. this quick. I'll just put in my info. Yeah, yeah. so we put in Eric's info, <laughs> and then we and then we awarded it. But he now gave, he's he now he's changed the away. password. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So they've just lost. I, I didn't it. They're going to have to sign up for their own. Cat5.tv slash Netflix. I did not hear from the good folks in Halliburton who won that, but oh really. Boy, my oh, boy, kids sure let it. me know the password had changed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what we have here, Robbie? What's what's that? Oh, yeah, right, right. Check from when out. I was in Halliburton. Yeah. I said that I had purchased. I think when we talked about it. I mentioned yeah. that I had purchased a, a postcard. Wow. Because, you know, we love to receive postcards, even if it's from the host of the yes. show. I mean, hey, Category whatever. 5 team and yeah. viewers. Having a great time in Halliburton and area. Today, Thursday, I'm taking Becca and the kids to a log run. A log run. The log shoot. Oh. Yeah. Wasn't that? Is that C-H-U-T-E? Like a shoot? Yeah. Like a water? Like they used to put yeah. logs in yeah. this man-made kind of water shoot, for lack yeah. of a better word. It's it's like a kind of a like a boat. Kind of thing. That, I don't know. Like a big, well, big way, yeah. the biggest water slide you have ever seen. Cool. Let's put it that way. Should be a memorable adventure. It was. Have fun and looking forward to seeing you Tuesday. Robbie and his big smiley face and all that, that sort of stuff. Well, Look, he didn't stamp. cheap out on the stamp either. Check that out. <laughs> yeah, okay, nice. This is yeah, some we, of the many beautiful sights to enjoy. And we've actually stood There's in a, a lot, of those, lot of those that. spots, for sure. From Halliburton. Yeah, that's... Cool. Very yeah, nice. no, I love love the area. Miss it already, and okay. we, well, we I, got back and I jumped. saw that bridge, and I saw that plane. Yeah. I didn't see that plane. I'm not sure. Now, maybe some of our viewers from Halliburton, and it's nice to have you here. Maybe some of you can let us know. I noticed that they were painting the, the historical plane that that is there. Yeah. I wasn't sure if they, they were, were there and scaffolds and doing all yeah. kinds of neat stuff. And then the skies opened up and started just pouring oh, and thunder and lightning. And <laughs> they weren't the day there of the anymore. Show. The day of the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. Guy Jim, nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we should, uh, I, you know, well, I want Your wanna... age is just good to... Never mind. <laughs> uh, young at heart. Young at heart. The shorts prove it shot. Um... I want to look at Debian. I mean, have you ever worked with a true Debian install? Because I love I've not going to the roots. One, no. Okay, well, I love going to the roots of Debian-based operating systems and just going straight to Debian. And, uh, you know, I run Debian at, at the office. That's what I use as my main uh, production computer operating system. Now, it's kind of... I, I don't know how you would quite say it, but it's 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 not difficult at all. It's It's more... If you really want to get your hands into your Linux distro, into your, your operating system, Debian's a great way to go. Get your hands off my Linux distro. No, well, you know, like you can get something like Zorin OS, which is fantastic for an end user who doesn't want or doesn't know a lot about Linux at this time and wants to just kind of get in, get their feet wet, learn how Linux operates on their computer, that kind of thing. Debian, on the other hand, gives you the opportunity to really... Um, customize your computer. I love that. I love being able to set it up the way that I love. 
And that's exactly what I've done at the office. What I want to show you is how to get our hands on Debian. So all we're going to do is simply visit their website. Linux is a free operating system. So it's so, I mean, it's, it's exceptional that you can just download yeah. it and install it. I've just gone to Debian.org. I'm going to actually take you through this. And for those of you who are not new to Linux, then just hang out with us tonight. We're just having a fun time, and, and we're going to maybe take this time to, you know, maybe there are some people that are joining us in the chat room. Maybe there are some people who are joining us on the live feed uh, or even in the after show as well who are curious about Linux. So let's, let's support them, and, and we're going to hang yeah. out and show them our way through here. I'm going to go, uh, okay, under Getting Debian, right on the homepage, CD ISO Images. And then let's, I mean, you can get it however you want. I'm going to go through HTTP or FTP just to make it real easy. And just scroll down. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you kind of an interesting way to, uh, to do this. Let's see. See what builds are here. Now, oh, let's see. Download CD DVD. All right. Go back here. Oh, okay. I want to click actually on... Let's go with the network install. Because what I really, really want to do is get the really, really small one called the uh, the business card version. See the business find. card version. Yeah. Let's see what I can find. Now I'm seeing the network boot, small CDs, smaller CDs, smaller CDs. Ah, this is, there you go, business card shaped CDs, you know, little stuff. Reason for it is this is like such a small download. It's 40 megabytes. I've got a 32 32-bit uh, processor, so I'm going to go i386. See that one right there? So if you're using a 32-bit processor, i386 is what you want. If you've got a 64-bit processor, like the Intel current uh, generation processor or um, AMD, you would go AMD 64, even if it's Intel, okay? Don't let that confuse you. That's just a 64-bit processor. I'm using VirtualBox, so I'm going to go i386 because I'm not going to run my virtual machine as a 64-bit virtual machine. I don't need to have more than 4 gigs of RAM, and I don't need 64-bit extensions. So I'm going to download that. Notice it's only going to take 30 seconds to download. That's crazy. This is a whole operating system. What it's actually doing is it's downloading the installer ISO, and then it's going to do everything else through the Internet. Because wow. Linux uses, we've talked about it before, repositories. Okay, you've got a pretty decent uh, you know, connection here, though. It may take more oh. than 30 seconds for oh, yeah. the other folks. Sure, but, it may. But a quick, uh, yeah, a quick download, all the same. Chat <laughs> says, "Can't you speed up your download? Thirty seconds." So I've downloaded that to my desktop. It's there. There we go. So That's what I'm going to do? Roguish looking bunch you've got on your desktop. They are just, uh, just always up to shenanigans. <laughs> okay, system tools. Oracle VM VirtualBox. I'm going to hop in there and I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Let's do it. We're going to call this My Debian System. Now, I'm doing this as a virtual machine just because we're going to be using this as a server um, kind of distro. If you want to install this as a, an actual production environment to replace Windows, to replace your Linux distro, you don't need to use VirtualBox. Burn the ISO and go ahead. Just make sure you've got your network card uh, connected to the, to the network you're going to need internet in order to do this. So I've called it my Debian system. It's automatically determined that this is Linux Debian because I put Debian in the name. It's defaulting to 384 megs of RAM, no problem. And is asking me if I want to create... A number? Oh, I don't care. I don't need a lot of RAM. I'm just kind of clicking next, next, next because all this stuff is fine. It's not a virtual box tutorial, so we'll just let it go. Okay, my Debian system settings. First thing we want to do. First of all, it's a server, so I'm going to turn off the audio controller. I'm going to turn off USB 2.0. And don't need anything else. I'm going to throw the CD in the drive. Look at this. I don't need to burn a CD because I'm using VirtualBox. I've highlighted the CD drive, which is virtual. And I'm going to go choose a virtual CD disk file. Now, oh, it's already selected it, I guess, because I was testing it earlier. And so I can do that, or you can go choose a virtual uh, CD, DVD, disk file. That is going to allow you to browse to your ISO. Double check your settings. Everything looks good. Don't need 3D acceleration. Network. We're going to yeah, change so that to bridged. bridged. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to access this computer through your network. Everything else should be fine. Okay. And then double click. 
And we are booting up from that ISO file, basically booting up uh, a computer. But it's a virtual computer within our actual physical computer. There we go. Okay, so English. Canada. So a Wi-Fi uh, network connection could American be problematic, English. couldn't it? Could it? Could it be problematic? No. Wi-Fi, uh, in my case, would not be because I'm using virtual. I'm using VirtualBox, so okay. my connection is going to be persistent. Right, right. But right, you're right. right that if I was doing an install from a CD, I wouldn't actually have a Wi-Fi connection to connect to. That's right. You'd actually need an Ethernet connection. So usually that's not a problem. Though I mean, in the, the install is so quick, so easy that you're going to be able to, you know, take, you know, run a cable, and it can be just temporary, and then you can set up Wi-Fi after the fact once the install is done. It's already asking me for some system-specific stuff. What do you want to call it? Debian-system, we'll call it. That's your host name. Domain name, I don't have a domain, so I'm just going to hit enter. It's selected Canada. I'm saying yes. These are the sites that it could download from. Okay, so use a mirror in a country that is close to you. That's ca.debian.org. I guess, you know what, this is probably, it looks like they're all Canadian, so... There's the Calgary University, so I'll just hit enter on that. Do I have a proxy? No, so I'm just going to hit enter. It's downloading the release files from the repository, so it's basically determining what all the newest stuff is that I'm going to need. Create a password for your root user. Whoa! Robbie needs to type and not talk at the same time. And Eric, it doesn't <laughs> help when you elbow me. Sorry, I'll try to behave in the future. Full name for this user. We'll just call him Robbie. Username for your account, Robbie. There you go. Whatever. Uh, in this case, it's fine. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Eastern time zone. Good to go. So if you made your password a bunch of asterisks, that would be You'd fun. be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would ever oh guess. Oh, gosh. It's showing it. <laughs> Sorry. How many asterisks is that? Eight. Okay. Now, this is asking you about your hard drive. What do you want to do? Just go use entire disk. Because that's going to wipe out everything, right? Okay, all files in one partition. That's fine. In this case, not getting into the advanced stuff. Finish partitioning and write to the disk. This is going to wipe... If you're doing this on a physical computer, this is going to wipe out everything. So that's why it is redundantly saying, okay, so I know that you said you want to wipe out everything, but are you sure? That's really unlike uh, Unix to actually ask you a second time. Well, it's being nice to us because we're new here. We're okay. just entering the world of Linux. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to let that go. And as that, now what it's going to actually do, see that? It's retrieving, retrieving, retrieving. It's actually going out on the Internet, getting the information through the Internet of latest files, latest packages, latest builds, and then it's actually going to download those so that uh, they can install on your computer. Oh. So, and that's why it was so small. That's why it was able to be How so small. How powered that off? So oh. now, okay. don't spoil the surprise. Okay. I had a question. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. So now it's pro when it prompts you, see what, what it gives you is it tells you, uh, it gives you a list of the different options that you can choose. And I've selected to install a web server, to install SQL and uh, SSH all that kind of stuff. And then it goes through the whole, you know, download Rigor Maru, downloads everything, and finally we can actually boot into, and it's that easy, right into our system. Very cool. There we go. So I'm going to log in if I want. You don't have to, but see what I can do is I can just leave it like that. Now, I chose to install a GUI just because I'd like to be able to use the GUI once in a while. But if I don't log in or if I want to use terminal, that's cool too. But watch what I can do now, now that I've got that system running. So even if it's a physical machine on my computer, well, the first thing I'm actually going to need to do, Eric, is I am going to need my IP address. Because I'm in GUI mode, I'm going to get it this way. So you're going to get a... Like an internal 192.168 kind of thing? Or are you going to get... Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, because we want to be able to connect to this. Now, remember that during the installation process there just a moment ago, I asked it to install automatically through the Internet the LAMP stack. So you see here that my IP address, notice how I've done that. I've right-clicked on the networking up here, gone connection information. My IP address is 10.0.0.115. So now, if I switch back to my actual physical computer bring up my browser and I go 10.0.0.115, you'll see that it's actually hosting up It Works, 
and it's doing that through the network from that computer or it could be a virtual machine in my case. So now we have a full LAMP stack installed, built, ready to go with SQL, with SSH. So I should be able to, if, if all went well, I haven't tested this, we could bring up terminal. Let's give it a try. SSH, Robbie at 10.0.0.115. Oh, I've already, okay, now in my case, I'm gonna need to remove the uh, the key because I and you won't see that that's because I already had a computer I'm using DHCP I already had a computer at one point that uh, that was at 10.0.0.115 so the authentication was different okay so do I want to save this authentication yes okay enter my password and now you'll see that I'm actually connected to what Debian so I'm actually logged in remotely to that computer through SSH it was that easy I didn't have to even do any apt getting it was it all just worked so now that I'm SSH in so that computer can be anywhere on my network it can be whatever well wow. I can open it up through the firewall so that it can actually become you know open up port 80 and it becomes a, a web server right because it is hosting through Apache so I'm SSH into it which is Linux's kind of way of giving me access to the file system so anything that I do here I'm actually doing on that computer Right? There it is, Debian. Just created, just installed. So now if I go CD var www on that computer, and then there's an index.html file, index.html. I can do this through terminal. There's the, the file. We've seen this before. Okay, so if I go, hello, I just added this. Right? For the sake of doing that, I'm going to save that file with Control O, and then con uh, Control. Uh, let's see, file name to write index. Oh, got to be super user. Pseudo nano index. Okay. Oh. <laughs> see what I did? It's Debian. It's a little bit different, and I, I'm still, I was just in the Ubuntu mindset because I'm looking at it from my computer. You are too. Debian does work a little bit differently. There's no, you're not doing sudo, you're going to do su. Right. Watch how that's a little bit different. I just type su, enter my password, and now I'm actually root. So now I can go nano index.html. I can edit that file. Okay. I edited this and I'm just showing you this so, uh, just so that you can see that now that I've saved that with control O and control X to exit I refresh in my actual computer that's connected to 10.0.0.115 okay and you see that I, I edited, edited this. this yeah so I can now you know I can host a website on that I can host a, a WordPress blog on that little server that I've created. <laughs> it's a virtual machine, so now I can transport that anywhere I like. I can put it on, uh, you can put it on that uh, little device that you've got yeah. with VirtualBox because it's a it's a file that I can move around. It's a virtual machine. And then I can put it on my Fit PC3. Stick sure you can. Yeah. Take it where... Absolutely. So now it is a, an actual, you know, base install server. But then again, okay, looking at Debian nice looking operating system we can actually play around and and turn this into a you know it's, it is a decent operating system decent distro for sure and what you see out of the box is pretty uh, bare minimum remember this was a 40 meg download and you can really really spice it up using synaptic package manager you can get the different things like uh, comp is for example to really make it look nice and configure your themes do whatever you like but in this case, we're actually setting up specifically as a server. So that's different than using Turnkey, for example, going back to Turnkey Linux, right. where we don't really have to install anything. But then again, Debian let us install right at the installation. You know, one of the installation steps was, here, push space if you want to have a web server. Push space if you want to have SSH. Really, really simple. Really, all that's done is it's downloaded the Apache PHP 5 um, program, the, the meta meta package and installed it on my computer so 
it's cool stuff. Very cool. Any stuff. questions in the chat room? We love to hear from you. And of course, you can get your questions in to us live at category5.tv. Do we have uh, any more questions that have come into our glorious well, we, inbox? We have some, uh, here's one um, from Dr. K from Irvine, California. <coughs> hey, uh, Hi, Dr. Robbie. K. I can't get the RSS feeds to work anymore on my Android phone, Samsung Galaxy S3 in Dogcatcher. The feed will load and I can see episode names and descriptions and the video shows download instantly. No waiting time for the download, but there's nothing there when I try to play them. I've tried the MP4, H.264 and MP3 feeds with the same result. I listened to eight other podcast feeds without any problems. Would love to be watching this show again. And that's James K. from Irvine, California, USA. All right. Thank you for the question. And it's actually, it's it has been addressed. And, and I think it was a recent show where I mentioned, make sure you use our, our search system that's on the website or just go simply over to search.category5.tv. And I think you may have had trouble finding this, but what because I just did a quick Google search just to see... And I noticed there in the email that you've spent dog, uh, or spelt dog catcher with two G's, and the the question was submitted to us, but you'll see at search.category5.tv, it was submitted with only one G. So if I submit that search, we'll be able to find the episode at least for you where that particular question was addressed, 247. So, and it was the exact same question, except the the user had spelt it with one G, so... There you go. I should really stay on top of that it kind of stuff, be eh? Uh, yeah, I just did it. Okay. I went into Google and just double checked because I, I remembered okay. that question coming through. So, uh, Dr. K, check out episode number 247. And I want to show you another really, really neat feature of our website. When you go to episode number 247 or any episode of Category 5 TV that is, you know, relatively modern. We're not going back over Season 1, Season 2 files and stuff and, and doing this. You'll actually see in the show notes for that episode, there are a whole bunch of little tiny play buttons. So uh. if you want to see a specific thing in the show, you can click on the play button that corresponds to the, wow. the line item that you're looking at in the show notes, and it will actually start the video at that point in the video. So usually with viewer questions, it kind of starts at viewer questions so there you see it viewer questions so if you started there you know that uh, you know a couple questions where's dog catcher there let's do a control F dog catcher there it is so you see that it happened just after the news you can see that in the show notes so you can start the video at the news and just skip over it and then the very very first thing that happens after the news is your question so all that to just kind of show you a little wow. bit about the functionality of our website. Um, the new website is, you know, opening up to make it easier for you to find stuff. And so that's why, rather than redundantly answering the question, I, I'd encourage you to learn how to use those services on our website. And episode number one forty-seven yeah. or two forty-seven, pardon me, um, is where you'll find the answer to that question. So. All right. Thank oh, you. And um, Moon Shadow says, "Hi, Robbie from Halliburton." Mm. Or is that "Hi, Robbie from Halliburton"? Moon Shadows. I'm Love you. Do yeah. Time for another question. We're getting close. Aren't We're we? getting pretty close. Moon Shadows is the winery there that does the uh, the maple wine. So oh, it's nice to have you watching. Very, very yeah. nice. Maybe, I have. Maybe, maybe you should sponsor this show. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. The rating just went up, and the hosts uh, just became inebriated. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I have something for you that reminds me. It's up in the kitchen. I, otherwise, I would present it all gloriously. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, you you at home, you know what I got Krista last week. So I've got one of those for Eric as well. So, Ooh. yeah. Mm -hmm. That is literally all the time that we have, Eric. Well, and this is it. I mean, tonight is the last show in this studio. Can you believe it? Wow. So it's... And that's that's all the time that we have. Quite literally. So... <laughs> There you go. What do we do? I mean, well, we're going to have to tear this thing down. Let's tear it down. Let's tear it down. Hey, you have a fantastic week. We'll see you from the new studio next 
Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, and boy, we've got our work cut out for us, so it begins now. I didn't get to read Robert's question, but hi, Robert Grzynski. Hey, Robert Grzynski. Yeah. Nice to see you. Uh, get your questions in live at Category5.tv. If we didn't get to you tonight, we will do our best to get to you again uh, in a coming episode, but we'll see you next Tuesday night. Eric, let's do this. Let's do it. All right. All Bye. right. I get a little Hillary up in this? Oh, yeah. Where is she under Testing. the desk? One, two, three. Yeah. Hey, I'm Hillary. Word to your mom. <laughs> What's that about my mom?